choice because we have you on the inside of Jesus. But Christ is on the inside. He's working and we're seen on the outside. And Father, tonight we give you the praises. We give you the honor and the glory that rightfully belongs to you. We claim your word and we believe your word. We declare your word upon your people tonight that no weapon that is formed again we shall prosper. Lord, as you are fighting for us, that you are the giver of all good things. Every good gift comes.
scriptures have to write and in some title of faith. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Abraham when he was called out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he subdued in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shape, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes focused, saints. This world is not your eternal destination. As, as the songwriter said, this world is just my home and just what? Passing through. Heaven is our home. So don't get our roots dug too deep and don't feel too much despair when you hear about wars, rumors of wars and pestilences, sicknesses and diseases. Look up for your redemption. Draw it nigh. Hallelujah. Please join me in the hymn of Psalm 482 when the road is called up younger. I will be there.
truly, you know, a blessing, you know, because it overcame the devil by, you know, the word of their testimony. So, you know, we need to have a sense of God, always be ready to testify of God's goodness. Amen. I just want to thank God, you know, for, um, for the family that he placed me in um, growing up. Um, I never really, you know, was to, um, I never really liked too much about that he placed me in growing up as a child um, because I didn't understand, you know, I didn't appreciate, um, mainly because, you know, coming from a pastor who makes like a real pocket in school, um, it used to be really tough, you know, um, in primary school. I used to try to be a little bit in the shadows in primary school, but then pastor, he would come and bring a whole team to the um, school to do a drama, and at the end of it all, he would all say, this is my daughter, Amy, let me and wait, Amy. And then I, you know, the whole school would have realized, okay, you know, that is faster than my daughter. Yeah. And then in high school, I used to try to, um, try, always try to fit in with everybody, you know, always try to find a group of friends, but somehow I could have never really find a group of friends that I could have, you know, um, really form of friends and fit in properly with. And I didn't really understand it then, you know, um, and then um, it had many occasions where the RN teacher would come. And somehow, you know, I just used to see the empty class, so I used to just go and start to teach RI. And then I started to get the name called Pastor and Preacher. And that just made things, you know, a lot more as a young girl, you know, to be getting that name in school. They don't really want to get that at all. And, um, so it was kind of, you know, embarrassing for me at that time. But it's only, you know, the older that I got, I started to realize that the reason why I wasn't even fitting in, even in UB2 for probably the first two years, you know, um, I kind of was by myself, didn't really um, have, like, that same group of friends or anything like that. It's only now that I realized that, you know, God, He called us, He set us apart, you know, um, not to be like everybody else, you know, but to be different, to stand out, to stand out for Him. And the thing is, once you are for Him, you know, you be saying that, you know, um, who can be against God? I think, well, the whole world is against God, you know. And um, once it is a stand for Christ, um, and you try to, you know, be more like Christ, the whole world will be against you. It will really fit you, you know. Um, and it's really now that, that I understand that. But when it is, you know, I think about um, eternity, you know, we ask ourselves, you know, this whole life that we are living, you know, as believers, being against, you know, the, the world, going against the norms, you know, doing things that, I mean, so many people, you know, they look at us, I mean, when it says um, somebody do something wrong, you know, a um, Christian, the first thing you would say is, and you're a Christian, you know, so many times you may not hear um, about another religious self, you know, belief, but they would always have like, but you're a Christian, and that's where you win, you know, because we are so much as expected from a believer in Christ. And we ask ourselves, well, sometimes I ask myself, you know, is eternity worth it? When it is to think about it, is eternity really, is heaven really, is this a life that you are living really worth it? Yes, of course it is worth it. Because this life is just temporary, you know, and um, heaven, you know, that is eternity. And it is so worth it. Right now, we need to live that life worth it. Christ dying for us, for that every single sin, sin that He died for, we need to live that life for Him. And I just want to thank God for where He has placed me and that family that He has placed me with because um, growing up, you know, uh, a lot of times we would be forced to come to church, you know, uh, forced to, to be here. But I mean, now, you know, um, it's, a, you know it's our own decision and choice, and I'm glad that. You know, God has changed my life. He has opened my eyes. He has revealed Himself to me. You know, and He has drawn me to Him so that, you know, I can freely be in His house and to be in His presence. So I just want to thank God for you know, all these small details from, from, um, from the moment I was born, where I was born, who I was, you know, um, who I grew up with, and all these different things and different challenges. You know, um, so many challenges never end. You know, even as a, you know, as a child of God, child of just never end. But I just want to thank God that He is always there for us. Amen. And I just want to thank God for that hope that 
Yes, God wants it. Each and every one of us, all the eternity that we can be with Him, come on, where you know it is perfect. You know, we don't have to worry about anything, you know. And I just want to thank God for the truth, you know, His word, His word that is truth, you know. Um, so many people try to, to question God, His existence, His love, try to question His word, and all these kind of things. But I just want to thank God that He continually, you know, um, confirms and proclaims Himself through through every single one of us, through His creation, through this entire world. He continues to show Himself as the one and only true God. You know, I just want to thank God, you know, um, even for um, those that, you know, um, have been sharing, you know, the science and all, all these things to prove God's existence and every single thing. You know, um, because, you know, that is like, we come to faith, you know, um, in Jesus, but, you know, that, that um, fact that confirms every single thing, you know, that it, it just blows your mind sometimes when it says you, know, you really look at all these different facts around us. You, know, you can't deny God. You cannot deny God. There is a God and there is a heaven and that God loves each and every one of us. He cares for us and He wants each and every one of us to be with Him and have us. I just want to thank God for that hope and for His love and for all that He has done. Amen. Amen. Right now he is 
shout out a special birthday to our cameraman, Brother Dewey, celebrated his birthday yesterday. yesterday, I don't know if you work or if you just took the day off, he did work, that's the kind of man that he is, he's committed to his family, he's committed to his church, he's committed to his job, praise, that's why the Lord is blessing him so very much, but anybody else celebrating a birthday, could I see your hand uh, coming up uh, this week, anybody who celebrated one, what about our wedding anniversary, anybody celebrated one, alright, well God bless you, God bless you. You know, there are comments coming about my uh, uh, my haircut, and uh, some says I'm shiny. Well, that's the glory of the Lord. Amen. All right, and you want to know why I, I took it so low? It is because of this simple truth is that my hair is growing so quickly. I decided that, I mean, it's $40 for a haircut, so I wanted to maximize my money. I said, you know, I'm going to cut it really, really low. All right, so it'll take, you know, as long as possible to, to grow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, let's turn in our Bibles to tonight's scripture. We are in the book of 2 Corinthians and uh, reading chapter uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 2. So I kindly ask you to turn there with me. And uh, I also join the reading of God's Word, all right? Let's all read God's Word together. Um, the subject tonight is uh, not too late yet, not yet. This is the third uh, message coming from this verse of Scripture. Okay, are we all there? Read together with me now. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. In the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Not too late yet. Not yet. Bow with me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, it is a delight and great joy that we come before your throne because um, the word of God is before us that has the power and the ability to transform lives. Dear Father, to change circumstances, to change hearts, to change minds, souls, and most importantly, to change destinies. This world, Father, desperately need a change. And uh, the change that this world needs it is a, a change of heart. And this is the core problem of the world today. The hearts of men needs to be changed. We remember what Jeremiah had to say, that the heart is indeed desperately wicked. And dear Father, we know that that is true. It is a tough one to swallow, but it is true as we examine our own hearts. Um, uh, we see within uh, the Lord that there, there are things that much to be desired, dear Father. We're living in a world, dear Lord, of filled with so much atrocities, a world that has so much hate, and a world, dear Lord, that is filled with covetousness and, and pride. And, their father, this evil continues um, uh, to grow, and the time is coming that you will make your appearing. And nobody can stop that. Nobody, no man, no devil can stop that. It is in the word of God, it is unchangeable, their father. And so we know that all that is happening around us today uh, must come to pass. And we as a church, uh, we as Christians, we are never surprised about what is happening. We are not surprised about this pandemic. We are not surprised about all that is taking place, all the restrictions and all of that. Because we know what the word of God tells us. And, oh, and perilous times will come just before you make your appearing. And Lord, it is here, it is now, dear Father. So we pray as we listen to your word that uh, we would indeed be encouraged and that person or persons that do not know Christ uh, will make a decision right now, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for standing. You may have your seats. Well, there was an elderly woman and uh, she died some time ago, having never been married. So she requested uh, uh, for her funeral service uh, that there be no specifically there be no male pallbearers you know to carry a coffin 
So in her handwritten instructions for her funeral service, she wrote this. She said, they will not take me out while I was alive, speaking about the men. They will not take me out while I was alive. They will not ask me out on a date for whatever reason. And says, uh, now that I am dead, I do not want them to take me out neither. <laughs> Folks, uh, it would have been too late for her to get married, uh, but that is okay. That is, believe me, that is, that is all right. But you know what the greatest tragedy is? It's being too late for salvation. We might be late for a lot of things, folks. But being late for salvation, it is the worst thing that can happen to anybody. USA Today had an article on the front page about those who escaped the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. And after interviewing over 300 survivors and family members of victims, the USA Today concluded that in the South Tower, those who did not delay but ran immediately are the ones who survived. But those who delay are the ones who perish. You see, the spiritual life is much the same. Those who delay and put off a commitment to Jesus Christ would be the ones that would be too late for them. USA also noticed today, also noted that people live or die in the towers by groups, not just by a, a single five, but by groups. And you wonder why it is that, I mean, groups of people perish together. And it is simply because of influence. Influence by those who were around them. And so because of the influence of others, and they said, listen, it is best that we delay, it is best that we stay here, they listen to the voice of others. And because they followed the crowd as it were, guess what happened? They paid the awesome price. My friend, it is not wise today to follow the crowd when the crowd is saying something different to what God has to say. If you have to stand up even as one individual in your home for righteousness and for truth and Jesus, stand. When I was converted, I was the me only member in our home at that point in time that made a decision for Christ, you see. And folks, I was called at an early age, at the age of 10, to stand up for a decision that I made on the 20th of May, 1975, to turn from a life of idolatry and to turn to Jesus Christ, knowing him now as the one who died for our sin. I stood alone, but not really alone. God stood with me. I stood there for two years with all the oppositions that I faced, folks, with all the trials that I faced. And sometime I will tell you more about that. But I stood and I thank God that I stood. I'm here to say that not only I thank the Lord, but I'm certainly my daddy thank the Lord that I stood. It's because of that stand that I made as a 10 year old boy, standing alone for Christ, in a world that was surrounded, in a home that was surrounded by idolatry folks. It brought conviction upon the heart of my father. And he too turned from idols to serve the true and the living God. It brought conviction upon my mother. And she turned later on too from idolatry to serve the true and the living God. Had I given to the pressure, folks, of the majority, I would not be where I am today. I would not be saved today. I would not be standing here sharing with you and preaching to you the gospel of Jesus. The crowd may not always be right, somebody. That's why the Bible tells us, now is the way that leads to life. And few there be that find it. Please, especially in these times that we're living, I encourage you to, members of Power and Science Ministries, we are living in a critical time. You 
will be brought to a place to face decisions. The crowd is saying one thing, but you've got to listen to God, what God is saying. If you listen to the crowd, you will never make it folks. If you listen to the crowd, you might miss those pearly gates. If you miss if you listen to the crowd, um, you might miss uh, the most important thing in your life. Um, and that is the opportunity to be saved. Um, and it might be too late. Um, if, if there ever is uh, a time for courage, it is now, folks. Um, if there ever is a time to, to respond to the call of God, uh, it is now. Those persons um, who are delayed and putting off making a decision for Christ and surrendering themselves to Christ, folks, um, will find out like those um, who stood with the crowd um, when those towers fell, um, they will find only that they made uh, the gravest mistake in their lives. Um, because why? Because they lost their lives listening to the crowd, listening to the popular opinions of men. People would always have opinions. The people of this world might seem wise, but in the eyes of God, there's foolishness, folks. Sometimes you keep listening and listening to what others have to say, and we shut our ears to what God has to say, folks. And listen, we miss God's blessing. Now it's time to stand up for righteousness. Now it's time to stand up for Jesus. Now it's time to stand up for holiness. Now it's time to take your side with the Bible. Now it's time to take your side with Christ and His church and not with the world, somebody. This world is heading on a fast path of destruction, of no return. And understand that you have to decide who is on the Lord's side. If you're on the Lord's side, can I hear amen tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. If you're on the cross, can I hear amen? amen. If you're on the blood, can I hear amen? amen. If you're on Jesus Christ of Nazareth, can I hear amen? amen? Praise the name of Jesus. In our text tonight, God offers salvation. But the guarantee of that offer is limited. You say, why, Pastor? Because the guarantee of salvation is limited to today. The text does not say tomorrow. If you would hear his voice, um, then open your heart. The Bible does not say tomorrow is the day of salvation. So you can wait till tomorrow. That is not what the scripture says. The scripture says today. Today is the only day that is guaranteed for salvation. For those folks who think um, that salvation is guaranteed for tomorrow and for next week and for next month and for 2022, that we are going to definitely see 2022. Everything that's happening today is going to pass, we're going to continue, we're going to continue. So we can always wait. Let me tell you something. You are gambling with the most precious thing that you possess. It's not your car, it's not your house, it's not your money, it's not your land, it's not your good look, somebody. Hello, you are gambling with your soul. Come on, can I hear you, man? Somebody. The greatest gambler, gambler is the man that gambles with his soul. So salvation is only guaranteed today. It's only guaranteed for now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Why? Tomorrow you might be dead. Amen. Look around us, folks. Uh, there is um, death all around us. Uh, if the COVID don't get you, the vaccine might get you. Yeah. Somebody. There's death all over. If that don't get you, the bandit want to get you. Come on, somebody. We we'll see what is going on in our country. People are being gunned down, folks, I tell you, losing their lives just like that. Um, and I know these persons did not expect that this would have been the last day upon planet Earth, um, but too late uh, shall be the cry. Someday, folks, uh, it will be too late for you to be saved. Um, Someday it will be too late for you to accept Jesus Christ. Um, someday it will be too late for you to say, I need to go to church. Uh, someday it will be too late for you to read your Bible. Someday it will be, late, be late too, late, too late for you to pray and to repent uh, and to seek the face of the Lord. Do not sell your soul for the pleasures of this world because that will be your ultimate regret. 
Ask Lot, for instance, the man of your old testament. What was his regret? And he will tell you his greatest regret is when he made a decision to choose the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. He chose the, the, the lights of the world as it were. He chose the fertile grounds. He made a decision of what was best for him physically and his family, but not spiritually. As children of God, whatever decisions that you make for yourself and for your family, always put spirituality first. Number one in your life, whenever you have to make that decision, folks, if you have to lose all the money, so let it be. If you have to lose all of that job, so let it be. If you have to lose all of fame, so let it be. If you have to lose all of power, so let it be. If you have to lose all of some opportunity in this world to become a so-called successor, so let it be. It is better, folks, that you lose out on this world than you lose out on heaven. Can I hear you again? Because it will not do you good, any good in eternity. Do you think Solomon Gomorrah did Lot and his family and his wife any good in eternity? Ask yourself this question, folks. With all that he had sold out for, it, it disappointed him. He gave up everything to pursue the world. And in the end, what did the world do for him, folks? The world brought him to disappointment. He lost his wife. She turned into a pillow of salt. He lost his daughters. Though his daughters came out alive. Yet, folks, look what happened to them while they were in Gomorrah. They learned the ways of Son and Gomorrah. Son and Gomorrah filled their hearts. Um, and so therefore, it was nothing for them um, to commit incest with their father and to make him drunk. Um, you see, Lot um, was able to bring them out of Son and Gomorrah, folks. Um, but Son and Gomorrah, I tell you, remained embedded in their soul and, and he could not get that out. Uh, physically, he got them out. Um, but spiritually, folks, um, he couldn't do it at all. And so you have to be careful tonight. The biggest regret folks, you ask Samson also and he will tell you that I made a big blunder in my life because I made decisions for my life based on what my eyes saw, based on what my flesh desired rather than what God will have for me. I was chosen by God to be a great judge. I was chosen to be God's anointed. I was ordained from a baby so that I would be a great deliverer for, for the Lord and for his people. But uh, I got sidetracked. Uh, and because of that, uh, I made some terrible decisions in my life. Uh, and folks, he lived to regret it. Uh, when Samson stood be uh, tied up to those massive pillars of that great Colosseum on his last and final day it was a great regret it was great remorse he said god i regret my life i regret how i lived everything came before him in just a flash of a moment as he saw his life he said look what i could have been but because of the choices and decisions that i make today i'm a laughing stock the philistines are laughing at me they are mocking at me. They are making sport at me. Because why? Is it because uh, I made bad decisions? Uh, instead of choosing the Lord, uh, I chose the world. Instead of choosing the Lord, uh, I chose to fulfill the desires of my flesh. Uh, I ignored my parents. Uh, my parents warned me about it. They told me what was the right thing to do. Uh, but I overpowered my parents. Uh, I was too stubborn like a mule. Uh, and so I am paying for my sins. Um, I am going down uh, in history, not as a success, but as a defeat. Um, this is how I am going to leave this world. Uh, instead uh, of being um, the man that God had called me to be, look how I am going to end uh, in all. How sad it was. Uh, regret after regret you see in the Bible books. Um, about people, instead of choosing the Lord, to serve the Lord, they chose the world, they chose the pleasures of sin. In closing tonight, because of time, the story is told about a famous millionaire, and he died of cancer. 
For weeks he suffered an intolerable agony. All was surrounded by every luxury and receiving every possible care, this millionaire died as wretched as a beggar, wretched as a vagrant, wretched as a pauper. But there was the usual publicity, the usual fanfare that goes with it, with it all, the flowers, the telegrams, the expensive bronze casket, and the towering beautifully carved tombstone. I mean, they brought it all for him. But after the funeral, a relative turned to another and asked the question, how much do you suppose that he left behind? How much do you suppose that he left behind? And he was expecting to receive an answer about how much money he left behind. How much land he left behind, the big house he left behind, the fine cars, and so forth. But the appropriate answer, folks, uh, the relative has disobeyed the situation. He said, you know what, how much he left? He left it all. That's the absolute truth today. Today, look at us, greed has consumed us. Hasn't it, somebody? This is why the world today, one of the primary reasons why this world is in a mess today. Yeah. Folks, because of greed, there are two things that you have to watch out tonight. You have to watch out for the greed of money, and you have to watch out for the greed of power. And you will see that every time there is a downfall, you will see folks that is right there between those, those two. This is where the world has come today. It is never, never, never enough. It doesn't matter how much money that you might accumulate in your lifetime, folks. I want to tell you the absolute truth. It is never enough. If you say right now, if I would have a million dollars just because you don't have it, you are just putting a number, if I have a million dollars, I will be happy. Folks, the truth about it is, if you do ever get a million, it will not satisfy you. You will find because of greed, you want another million. Ask the millionaires today in this world and they will tell you the absolute truth. It has not made them happy. It has not brought joy and contentment. No, it has only brought a desire to want more and to have more. This, folks, is what the power of wealth can do. And the, and, and the, the, the desire to have more, this is what it can do to people. Even in their dying moments, folks of them still holding on to what they have. They won't give anybody, they won't give to the church, they won't give to the poor, they won't give to nobody. They will go down with it to their dying grave. This is how powerful the desire to have wealth and money can be. When you think that you can possess it, folks, the truth about it is it possesses you. And so we see this is happening all around us today. And so he could not take one single thing with him. This man is noted that he worked hard. Yes, he worked very hard. I'm not saying that this man was not a hard worker. He was a hard worker. He worked as a slave. He grasped, he saved, he even cheated as, as much as he could do. He lied as much as he could lie, well, legally possible. He stole as much he, as he could to amass his great fortune. But why did he do all those things? He did it for self. And folks, unfortunately, when he died, he left it all. Now he is facing God. What answer do you think he is going to give to God? What answer do you think those are? who have rejected Jesus Christ, have rejected salvation because they pursued money and they pursued the wealth of this world and the power of this world. They had no time for God. They had no time for church. They had no time for a prayer meeting like this, folks. They had no time for spiritual things. Lord, what answer do you possibly think that they could give to God on the day of judgment? I wonder, folks, what they are going to say. But I want to say to you, I think that they are going to be speechless. Because when they look into the eyes of Jesus, those eyes will be as a flame of fire. The Bible says he is the righteous and eternal judge, seated on the throne of God. What excuse do you think? Today we are filled of excuses. As a pastor, I tell you, 
Folks, I have received more excuses than a teacher in a primary school and a secondary school. I can tell you that. And if you have a new excuse, come and let me know. I'll be glad to share with everybody. But I've got excuses again and again and about to the same thing, folks. It's me first and God after. That's what it is about them. And they try to turn and twist the Bible. They will tell you all kinds of things. You see, now when it boils down to it, God is not first place. When it boils down to what they are saying, God is second place, folks. And they will want to make you feel bad. They will want to make others feel bad. When you choose to stand up for righteousness, folks, do not think people are going to applaud you. Do not think people are going to pat you on the back. And I can tell you folks, you think I have a lot of patting on the back when I preach messages like this. Very few after the church will come and say, Pastor, that was a great message, folks. But I don't depend on those things to preach the word of God. I preach it because I'm called to be a preacher of righteousness, praise God. Not to please people, but to please God. And so I'll continue to preach because the only thing that will save you and your soul from going to a crisis eternity. So if you have to hate me but go to heaven, so let it be. Because I'm not here for your love. I'm here for the love of God. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So folks, today we are called to make a decision and to make a decision right now. When? Not tomorrow. Now is the accepted time. What is your decision going to be? You have put that decision too, too, long off, too long. You see, and by His grace, God has kept you alive. Folks, the only reason why you are alive today is not because the doctor is treating you really, really good. You think that that's the reason why you are alive today? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. There are people today, folks, are telling you they have the best doctors. They go to the finest medical institution, and yet they can't save them and they can't cut them. And that's an absolute fact, somebody. Why do you think you're still getting it? The answer is only one answer. Because Jesus. of God's grace and Jesus. Amen. We will pray, somebody. Because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could have been in, in a number of folks. We could have been another statistic, somebody. It's as easy as that. You see, how many people went out today and how many people will come back home to their family? Some will never make it. They'll end up in a hall. Come on, somebody. They'll end up in a funeral home. But you made it. Why? Why? Are we better than anybody else? No, the Bible says we're all in the same place. We're all sinners needing grace and folks. And the reason why we're here today is because by the grace of God, God wants you to be saved. But that opportunity is not always going to be here. Not too late yet, not yet, means, folks, uh, that there will come a time that it will be. It's not too late for you right now who are listening, folks, but it might be late, too late tomorrow. God will be in prayer. You say, Pastor, here is my hand, my decision for Christ tonight. I've been playing church. I've been putting off that decision for too long. My soul is at stake. Only two places, hell or heaven, but I choose heaven, I choose Christ. Would you lift your hand if you're in the auditorium and you are choosing Christ now? Would you lift your hand right now? And you say, Pastor, I've delayed that decision too long, but tonight I lift my hand and I make my decision for Christ. I'm glad that everyone so far in the auditorium that you indicated that it is well with your soul. I rejoice with you. But that one out there, listening online, just for you, I invite you to say this prayer because you want to accept Christ. Say this prayer right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gospel. I thank you for Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for my sin. I repent of my sin and ask forgiveness. I do not take Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord. And from the day forward, I will live for Him and serve Him in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Having said, made that decision tonight, God bless you. Hallelujah. Send us a message about it. Uh, we want to encourage you and help you 
to, to serve the Lord, the Lord Jesus, all the days of your life. Praise God. So as we are closing up the live broadcast this evening, we're going to spend a few moments uh, in prayer as a church, and you are more than welcome wherever you are, in your home, cars, and so forth, that you can join uh, with us for a few moments uh, in prayer. We have much to pray about. Uh, you see what is happening to our world. You see what is happening to our country again, folks. Uh, and so only the Lord can help us. It seems that man is running out of solutions. Uh, and man just don't know what to do. But God then uh, is saying, trust in me, praise God. And church, I want to say, ultimately, you see right now, the best thing that you can do is to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. So I bid our viewers a good night and our next live broadcast should the Lord tell you would be Sunday morning 9 o'clock and then in the evening would be 6 uh, the day. So God bless you. Always welcome to send us a prayer request and to give us a shout. Good night to you now viewers.